Have you ever struggled with compatibility on existing skeletal assets when using Blender to edit them? Well, I've got you covered. Allow me to present Armature Deform Controls from my Blend add-on collection, a functional solution to working in Blender with assets from other applications such as Maya or Unreal Engine. If you're already using Mr. Mannequin's tools, this add-on is included with it and installing a newer or older version over that may cause issues. So, to cut a long story short, the source of the problem is that Blender rigging must use Y as the primary directional axis of bones. What this means is that often when you import existing assets to Blender for editing, you either end up stuck with oddly oriented bones that are not easy to rig or constrain, or if you choose to snap them to Blender friendly directions, you break compatibility with wherever they came from after exporting. Despite what others may say online, simply changing the import and export primary and secondary axis bone settings is not a good practice as some asset armatures may have variation within their bones. So while one bone has, say, primary negative Z, another could have primary X, causing those export import settings to break your hard work. But there's this nifty little solution to separate deformation bones from animation controls, which is a good general rigging practice already, and can also enable armatures and animations to leave Blender as their source expects them, no matter the orientation, by only exporting the deformation bones. However, I found it takes far too long to accomplish this setup manually. Enter this add-on. We can easily add deform and control bones to any armature with this handy little operator button. You can attempt to automatically orient the control bones for animation in Blender, as well as try and figure out broken hierarchies such as Rigify's death bones with a simple auto-parenting algorithm. We can also add by selection and or the bones deformation setting itself. Now let's show off the per bone settings for manipulating these controls. I'll come back to all these uh, main buttons in a moment. In pose mode, we can tell the deformation bones to ignore scaling to achieve squash and stretch by translation that will actually work in most game engines. And we can also tell them to ignore location if we need to work with skeletons that may have different proportions. One of the most useful parts of this add-on is the automatic update option that can run when we are in edit mode, allowing us to easily edit the translation of the control and deform bones together while maintaining any offsets if required. For the most part, the head location of the controls and deforms must remain the same, but there can be rare situations in rigging that are a little bit too advanced to explain in this short video where it's useful to have an offset, so that is supported. We can, however, change the hierarchy, orientation, and role of the control bones in any way our Blender rigging demands without corrupting the original deformation bones. Then when leaving edit mode, the add-on even has the intuition to update all the pose mode constraints for us so we don't have to reset them on every single pose bone. On top of being able to edit our control and deform modes together without having to reset their constraints for every change, there are also a few other useful features. The option to have the control and deform bones in the same or separate armatures. You can set whether your meshes are following the deform or control bones with the use deforms ball in order to weight paint on either armature. If we have the mesh set to use deforms, we weight paint to the deform bones, and if the mesh is not using deforms, we weight paint to their controls. The add-on handles switching the vertex group names or the modifier target of any meshes using the armature for us, depending on whether we are using a combined control and deform armature or not. And it's easy to show and hide the different flavors of bones so they don't get in the way when you don't need them. I may add in an auto-hiding option in the future so you only see specific bones in certain modes to make things even less confusing. Another handy thing is being able to reverse the constraints so the controls follow the deforms, enabling us to bake animations from one set of bones to the other whenever required. If you aren't confident with baking settings, I've added a simple button that will bake either way depending on if the constraints are reversed or not. It can bake all actions or only the active one on the armature. Visual keying and fake user is recommended, but it's up to you if you want to clean the curves or only bake selected bones. This will bake without clearing constraints, instead just muting them all after it's finished to preview the animation. Baking to deforms will operate on all bones that have the deform setting set true, not just deform bones with controls. And baking to controls depends on the deform action names using a prefix that you can define in the user preferences. There you go, compatibility for pretty much everything without the troublesome time spent constraining and editing each individual bone. I need to do a quick shout out to CG Dive for his help testing this on a variety of different armatures and suggesting features. Go check out his channel for more general information on working with Blender and game engines. And you can get the add-on for free on Gumroad, donations appreciated, as well as the releases section of my Blend GitHub repository. All links in the description.